Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On, and it's Monday, but not just any Monday, it is transfer deadline day. Later on between 9 and 10, Spurred On TV will be taking over the Football Republic. So make sure you find the Football Republic on YouTube at The Football Rep, and on Twitter, our hashtag will be TFRDD. Follow that all day, you will be keeping up with all the latest transfer news. But today, this little piece here is about the five things we learned from the Colchester FA Cup game on Saturday that we won 4-1. And let's face it, guys, it was a workmanlike performance. It was very good. We weren't complacent. We didn't take them easily. And we played well with a kind of scratch half first team, half reserve team. In fact, I'd say that people were delighted that Pochettino played some of his big guns when the opportunities maybe considering uh, Colchester hadn't won in something like eight or nine games and a dead bottom of League One. He could have taken it more easy, but he didn't. He played Harry Kane and the big guns. Anyway, my first point kind of alludes to that. It is about our squad depth. A 4-1 win in a cup game like that, early kickoff with the fans all against us, whilst playing uh, kind of half our reserve team shows really good squad, uh, squad depth. I was very impressed with Tom Carroll. Now, it's weird because every time I talk about Tom Carroll, one week I'm like I'm very impressed with him, next one I talk about how I don't feel he's big enough to play in Premier League games. And something that happened on Saturday against Colchester really kind of uh, agreed with that theory of mine, which is he did well, I thought, uh, in defensive midfield. But when substitution started to get made in the second half, uh, Pochettino moved him up into one of the three behind the front man. And that, to me, and let me know what you think in the comments section, but to me, that is where I think he could really flourish in the Premier League. Because if you're one of the three behind the front men, you don't have to muscle your way into tackles like you do if you're just in front of the back four. So when you're playing teams who've got big midfielders, big, muscular, strong players, with Tom Carroll, sometimes it's like he's having to try and win headers when they're trying to bring the ball down on their chest, and he just gets out-muscled. However, when he plays in the three behind the front man, his technical ability really comes to the fore. He's a magnificent passer of the ball. His vision is fantastic. And he's not the slowest either. He's got a little turn of pace. He scored the fourth goal, a lovely little finish when uh, Chadley had certainly missed a harder finish than that, uh, an easier finish than that earlier in the game. So I was very impressed with him. Uh, again, squad depth wise, I thought Ben Davis did a good job. Him and Danny Rose, it's almost like they're, they're playing one game on, one game off, and neither of them seem to be bothered by it. It's really about which full back suits the team we're playing against and Ben Davis was chosen on Saturday and he did a good job defensively I think he's slightly more sound than Danny Rose he certainly links up better with uh, teammates I think in terms of playing triangles and bringing in uh, the three behind the front man and getting the ball into the strikers feet sometimes so I was impressed with him it'd be really interesting I think to see which fullbacks play against Norwich tomorrow night will it be Trippier who started the last few uh, the last few Premier League games but did start on Saturday as well Will it be Ben Davis or will Danny Rose and Kyle Walker come back in? Once again, let me know who you think should start in the comments section below. And finally, it's the kind of, in terms of the squad depth, it's the Chadley versus Son debate. Also versus Lamella, but Lamella and Chadley started the weekend with Son on the bench. Chadley obviously scored two goals. One of them was an absolute perler. And I think a lot of you think maybe Chadley's too laissez-faire. It reminds me of how people used to feel about Freddie Canute. They felt like, oh, he was so laid back. That didn't mean he was a, a, a trier. But with Chadley, I don't think that's it at all. He, he works back, he covers his full back and helps them out. And he's just a magnificent technical player. Obviously, he's been injured this season, so the chances for him haven't always been there. But he scored two great goals at the weekend. It'll be interesting to see whether he gets a start tomorrow against Norwich. My second point in the five things that we've learnt from the Colchester game is about Eric Dyer. Now, let's face it, I've been waxing lyrical about Eric Dyer all season. Uh, if we'd been uh, producing this content last season, I was then as well. I think he's a magnificent sign, and we got him for a few million quid. He learned his trade in Portugal. Technically, that means he's a far more gifted player than a lot of English equivalents at his age. And uh, at the weekend, he just sat back in centre back, uh, centre back, not his usual central midfield role that he's been playing this season. And he's like a duck to water, really. I think he helped Kevin Vimmer out, who uh, obviously is going to get more of a chance now that Jan Vertonghen is out. Uh, he was a leader, and I do think he will be a future Tottenham Hotspur captain. I think tomorrow night against Norwich, he will go back into his central midfield uh, enforcer role. I really do. But if Kevin Vimmer, over the next few games, as he beds in as a first-team player in the Premier League, if he finds it a bit difficult or he ha makes a couple of mistakes, he's a bit wobbly, then I think it's fair to say we will all feel safe if Dyer moves back into centre-back and then maybe Nabil Bentaleb comes in uh, just in front of the back four or Ryan Mason or even Tom Carroll, uh, depending on who we're playing against. So just once again, I just want to say Eric Dyer. What a player. Thank God Daniel Levy signed him up to another new contract this season. I think he will go to the European Championships for England. I don't think England have a defensive midfielder enforcer 
And that's what Eric does. It's not like, oh, dare I say it, you're Jack Wilshire who sometimes plays that role, but it's almost like he doesn't want to. He wants to be further, uh, closer to the strikers. I think Eric Dyer will sit in that role and actually just protect his back four, which let's face it, with the calibre of centre-backs that England have right now, we really, really need. So my second point is just a huge big up to Eric Dyer. My third point is uh, today is about Harry Kane and how reliant we are on him for goals. Now, obviously, he started the game on Saturday, which was a bit of a surprise to some, but he didn't score. He did the hard work well. He brought other people in. He missed a couple of half chances and the Colchester fans were getting on his back. But what I love about Harry is he never stops trying. He never stops getting into positions, uh, dangerous, uh, dangerous positions. He never stops trying to hit the target and he'll never be bothered about missing chances. And that's why he's a natural goal scorer because natural goal scorers don't get phased by that kind of stuff. However, my overall point here is that I'm not sure we have to worry that much, or certainly as much as people are, are talking about on social media, about not having another striker. Now, this is very poignant on uh, transfer deadline day, of course, because you know the Berahino rumours are still going. The Moussa Dembele deal just dropped through, seemingly. But Nasser Chadley can play that role. He runs the channels well, he holds the ball up well, he's good in the air. And if we need another option, Hung Min Son, of course, can play it as well. He's slightly different, gets into pockets of space, uh, finds himself in the channels well, and uh, good finisher as well. They're both good finishers. So I can totally see why Mauricio Pochettino, Paul Mitchell, and Daniel Levy aren't just jumping the gun to spend the 25 million on Berahino that I think Jeremy Peace and West Brom are asking for. However, what I will say is be interesting to see if West Brom uh, did accept a bid from another club, a Newcastle or a Stoke, would that cause them to jump in and match that bid? I'd be interested in that. But my third point overall is I don't think we need to be as worried about Harry Kane being the only recognised striker as maybe some of you are. But let me know what you think. My fourth point in the five things we learned from the Colchester game, Kieran Trippier's crossing. Now, I have to say, before, uh, before he played a game for us, after we'd signed him, I'd seen quite a lot of him, and I think he is up there in the top three deliverers of a football in terms of crossing in the Premier League. I'd put Kevin De Bruyne up there as well. He's Beckham-like in terms of how he whips it round the, uh, his fullback and gets it into the pomo, the position of most opportunity. And it's up to the strikers then to make their runs across the near post. He will put it there time and time again, just like he did for the Watford goal, the winner, the 2-1 in the last minute, and he was doing it all again on Saturday. Now, whether he's as good defensively as uh, Kyle Walker remains to be seen. I'm not so sure about that. He certainly isn't as quick and therefore doesn't get himself out of difficult um, situations as quickly as Kyle Walker does. And I think sometimes that's what Pochettino likes. A, a quick player who, once he's caught upfield, can get back quicker. But, you know, it's an interesting point. Is he making more guilt-edged chances so than uh, Kyle Walker is uh, defending at the other end in terms of defending dangerous counter-attack opportunities? So it's an interesting one. Anyway, all I know is Kieran Trippier has played the last few Premier League games. He played on Saturday. I would start him tomorrow against Norwich. I think his crossing is great. I think Harry Kane needs crosses. He thrives on crosses. He's a great head of the ball, great finisher on the first touch. So I would keep Trippier in until, you know, until maybe he makes a mistake and then you bring Carl Walker back in. And that's how Pochettino seems to be playing it this season. My final point today in the five things we learned from the Colchester game is about the FA Cup draw. That was made last night. Uh, we avoided what I call the big guns, but it is an interesting draw. Not a bad draw, home to Crystal Palace. But why it's interesting is uh, as soon as Adebayor signed for Crystal Palace, I tweeted uh, from the Spurred On account saying, oh, good news, we played them twice, so he won't come and score against us, but he will, uh, on a kind of short-term deal, want to impress his manager, so probably score against some of our rivals. And now, of course, straight away, we are playing them. Adebayor will be so up for it. He'll probably score. It's just a matter of whether we can score more than them. I'll take Palace at home. We've done the double over them this season. Uh, I don't think they're taking the FA Cup as seriously as they're taking their kind of push for European places. And they've been on a bad run recently. So if that run continues uh, and we play them in the next few weeks in the Cup at home, we play a decent team, I can see us moving on to the quarterfinals of the Cup. Of course, uh, Man City are playing Chelsea, so that's one of the big guns out of the way, whatever, if we get make those quarterfinals. Ah, I really just want us to get to Wembley this year, not just the semi-finals. I want us to make the final of the Cup. Hasn't happened since 1991. That's basically none of our uh, lifetimes that we really remember. I vaguely remember the cup final uh, and Gaza and everything. But come on, wouldn't it be great to take the silverware, take the cup back to White Hart Lane at the end of the season? Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of my five things that I felt we learned from the Colchester game in the, in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And remember that today on deadline day, we're going to be on the Football Republic on YouTube from 9 till 10. Uh, they're going to be across everything all day with hashtag TFRDD on Twitter. Check it out. Make sure you keep across all the news and keep letting us know what your thoughts are. And especially if you hear any rumours of people coming into Spurs or leaving Spurs, come on you Spurs.
Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On and it's transfer deadline day. Big questions to answer. Will I be left as devastated and upset that we haven't bought a striker at the end of today as I was when I stood here back in August and I was just like, Daniel Levy, what have you done? 